okay, uh, I don't know how much you engage the academic community uh, here, but if you've been watching over the last, I'd say, 36 months, there's been a mild uptick in essays by folks about, well, how do we improve the impact of political scientists uh, on policy? Uh, when I was at the APSA meeting two years ago, that was the number one topic. Now, kind of like some chronic disease, there's a cycle to this. It keeps coming back every about 10 or 15 years, and people wring their hands. You know, um, I said, well, you know, what is our relevance? So we're going through a cycle now. Um, I guess the good news of this presentation is there is a tremendous impact of the academic community on policy, but it's not in four weeks or four months or even four years. Roughly the impact of academic work is felt in policy in any substantial way in about 40 years. Hmm. And what we're going to talk about is the bad news, and that is the impact of one uh, idea that was embraced by the academic or portion of the academic community about 40 years ago and it's the chickens are coming home to roost and that idea essentially is uh, more may be better now you know originally this idea was popularized I suspect uh, in any practical way by the French Pierre Galois comes to mind, there are other theorists. Uh, there's some, some work I, that I've commissioned that details that period and the French thinkers that came up with the idea that perhaps having more nuclear weapons powers would, would make the world a safer place. But um, in any case, the academic community embraced this roughly, I'll give Ken Waltz the, the credit. I mean, you could probably assign it to someone else, but but he had a certain flair with a title, more may be better. Uh, and that was about 40 years ago. Yeah. So uh, where we're uh, potentially headed, and what this brief will spotlight as a possibility, is uh, you know, we talk about new, the second age, nuclear weapons age, second age. Well, we may be going into a new phase for nonproliferation. You know, up until now, you could argue that we, and when I say we, the U.S. and like-minded nations, uh, have thought that putting legal, diplomatic, and technical barriers in, in place uh, to head off countries from getting nuclear weapons was the way to go. Um, the new thought that we may be gravitating toward, and that I think this topic about the Middle East and starting with Saudi Arabia spotlights is uh, something a little different, which is, well, you know, uh, maybe if we let folks get right to the edge of getting nuclear weapons, kind of like conceal and carry weapons uh, laws back in my home state, the bars would get much quieter and, and things would be much safer. Uh, people would behave. Uh, there would be more peace as a function of fear and loathing. Yeah. So, uh, if I'm right about this, this development may be one of the more important developments, uh, not only of your lives, but of the lives of your teachers. And that would go back, you know, at least uh, until the late 40s in most cases, or a little later. That's a big swath of time, big event.